Good morning. My name's Mark, Sue's man in the camera, even though she's a female. And today's episode is going to be a little different than what we've done in the past. It's actually been uh, long in the making. We've been full time now for two years, and the first year we kind of spent money like drunken sailors because we had already made the commitment uh, to live in our motorhome full time. So at that point, what could we do with that major expenditure that we made? But then as time went on, we could see that just like everybody else, we had a budget that we had to live in. So we decided to record for one full year what our costs were, and we've just come to that point. And we're gonna share that with you. So why don't you come along, we're at a KOA journey, and we'll take you on our financial journey that we've had for the last uh, two years. Come on, let's check, check that out. The money on my mind. A great day it will fix me all I've ever desired The money on my mind I count it every time One, two, three, four, five, six, seven And I count it Ooh. One, two, three, four, twenty-four, seven And I stack it Driving in my car Hi, I'm Sue and Mark is behind the camera, and this is our journey in miles. This is miles. If you're new to our channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and give us some uh, thumbs up. Join our family. Let me tell you a little bit about our style of full-time RVing. We're both retired, been on the road for two years now, and we chose to go the more comfortable way. As Mark always says, more and more into being tourists rather than being campers. So we chose one of the bigger rigs, it's comfortable. And back here we have our tow that we take with us. And this is our Honda, it's a 2013 Honda. There's the reason we chose to use this vehicle is because we love our recumbent bikes. And this is perfect, it's pretty much the only minivan that actually uh, could hold our, our bikes. We actually love our recumbents so much, we're going to get rid of them this year, honey. <laughs> Mark wants an electric bike. Yes, we're retired, <laughs> we're getting old, but I love our recumbents. That'll be another episode and another reason to subscribe to our journey in miles. That's right. Stay tuned. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. The nitty gritty requires sunglasses to come off and regular glasses to come on. <laughs> First thing I want to tell everybody is you don't have to get pencils and papers out and write anything down because if you last to the end of this video and if you go down into the description, I'm gonna actually have uh, Our Journey in Miles email address. You can email me. I will gladly send you my spreadsheet that I made that is gonna have the basic costs for RVing on our style, which is probably one of the more expensive styles. Not because we're rich, it's because I'm old. Uh, so this, that really that is something you have to consider is what is your lifestyle we do not do a lot of boondocking we don't do any boondocking yes we don't go into state parks um, we're just too big for some parks so because of the size and because we don't want to you know do the the harder part of camping this is a more expensive so this is our version and you got to find yours. What's right. your style? And, and uh, quite honestly, you know, once again, the yin and yang of Sue and Mark. If it was up to Sue, we probably would be doing boondocking because yep. we do have a solar system on yep. ours with 1,200 watts of solar. We bought our rig used, uh, and uh, so we certainly could do that. We don't go to Walmarts or anything because I'm too intimidated by wheeling 65 feet of machinery in in an unknown parking lot in an unknown neighborhood in an unknown area and uh, the people that can do that I literally tip my hat to you yeah you you're a lot braver than me I'm not talking safety brave I'm talking about just you know running into objects and uh, shopping carts and stuff so we just shy away from that uh, literally 99% of our camping is all done in private campsites and we'll we'll get into that so uh, the first thing we'll talk about is the miles driven uh, we have drove a relatively short 5,800 and 45 miles this so year. we we want to disclaim that th this is just for one year our mm -hmm. second year we didn't really keep track of things the first year the second year now 
um, we were keeping track of everything. So this is just from June to June, June of 2018 to June of 2019. Correct. And we uh, drive uh, about 250 miles or less per move. We use RV Trip Wizard. We highly recommend it. It's got a big radius that we can put on wherever our route is going, and it'll intersect all of the roads in and around where we're going. So it's real easy to do this. We do this because we're retired. The whole point is to see the United States, not to roar through it uh, for uh, directions unknown. So that's our particular travel style. We, we always say we are not on vacation. This is our lifestyle. So we're taking in everywhere. So we've traveled only 10 states this particular lap where we left Wisconsin. We meandered around. We spent our winter down in the Pacific Southwest. We've uh, went up basically California and now we're shooting back across through North Dakota and we're eventually going to end up back in Wisconsin. So that's why it's such a low number of states, 10 states. Uh, we use TripAdvisor when we get to each of these states and we'll do some Googling to see what's uh, to do there. Sometimes we'll modify the days that we're staying uh, in a particular place if uh, it looks like there's a lot of things. The important thing for us is that we uh, still subscribe to a lot of vlogs and you can't beat it when somebody has already been in the area that you're anticipating to be in and uh, especially if they have good video quality and they'll show you what they did it uh, makes it that much more exciting and you'll have that much more enthusiasm showing up to do exactly what they did when uh, they did a good job uh, videoing it. Right. Now, where do we stay each and every night? Well, we had already said that we stay uh, in private campgrounds mm -hmm. and we've stayed at repair facilities. That's our boondocking. Yeah, uh, <laughs> although we do use to get electric. Yes, uh, <laughs> but nine days out of the entire year we spent in repair facilities. That's actually quite a bit lower than our first year. How many was yeah. it the first year? Ooh, I want to say about 30, about 20 in one spot. And that was mainly because we had to wait for them to get parts. Right, So, but that turned out actually pretty good because it was in Atlanta. There's tons to oh, see in Atlanta. We, yeah, we drove into yeah. Atlanta almost every day just uh, doing our touristy things. Right, yeah. um, so we did stay one day at Harvest Host. We're going to try to change that this third year going around because yeah. the Harvest Host is awesome. It's just that when we finally remember to use them, we're in an area here in the northwest portion of the U.S. They seem to be a little light in Harvest they're, Host. They're light, plus we're just so big. So we do look at the satellite, just to, the view of where the Harvest Host is to see how hard will it be for us to get in there. Yes. And we did stay at one. It was uh, fantastic. Yeah, and uh, there's been a couple of times that uh, we actually were going to uh, stay at a place, but then under a little bit more scrutiny, you have to read the reviews and the different things that people say, and then, you know, you get the, oh, yeah, there was a bridge that had, a, you know, a five ton or a 10 ton capacity limit, so watch that. Well, you know, we're uh, 45,000 pounds with miles, so I've got to watch bridges that I drive yeah. over as well as bridges that I drive under. So uh, you got to kind of pay attention to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So we had a total of 37 stays, but six of the stays were one month at a crack. So if you do the math, which doesn't exactly make a lot of sense, but if you do the math on the 31 stays that were not one month, we ended up with a stay of average of 5.7 days. Take that for what it's worth. So you want to talk about this one? Ah, the ma mailing service. So we actually do have uh, an episode on our mailing service. We're doing it through the, um, what is it, St. Brendan's Isle in Green Cove Spring in Florida. Right, we can put a link down to that particular episode. Yeah, it really tells how it works for us, and it works fantastic. But, um, so the expense we're talking about for that, it costs us $20 a month to subscribe to this, and then um, usually on average two times a month where if we're going to be at a place for at least a week 
will uh, have our mail sent to us. So usually twice a month, on average, we'll have it sent. And that comes to about $18 per time. So when we figure it out for our budget, $56 a month just for our mailing service. Right. Well worth it, though. Very dependable. And, you know, some people let go full time and they, uh, they, they try to claim a different state as their residency, but yet they don't have a mail service there. This all gets dicey, you know, if down the road you end up getting audited. So my advice to you is if you're going full time and if you're changing your uh, domicile, you want to make sure that you pretty much clean out everything that you owned in the state that you're leaving. We left Wisconsin. Uh, if you're leaving Minnesota, Minnesota has a, a reputation for really coming after people uh, because they want their money. So make sure if you're leaving Minnesota at least that you don't have any property and you don't have a uh, Do you storage how unit. You said Wisconsin? Yeah. We're from Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> So um, the, the uh, uh, next thing that uh, you have to be aware of a cost per month is memberships. And Sue actually runs most of these memberships. It ends up being $43 per month uh, on average. You want to talk about yeah, some of these? Yeah, well worth memberships. So we, we use All Stays to um, find our different campgrounds. Um, we're part of the FMCA the Family Motor Coach Association and we got a discount on tire. We had to buy one tire or three actually. Mm -hmm. um, we belong to Good Sam, another good place to figure out where we're going to go. Um, other places, Harvest Host, KOA, Passport America, and then our RV Trip Wizard, which we use mainly for our planning, our travel plans. Right, and we absolutely love it. Love it. Another membership that we use a lot is Costco. So we Costco is pretty much everywhere, and we'll really load up on that, save money that way. And then we are bicycle riders. So we usually wherever we go, we like to find where are some of the best bike trails. So we also are a, a member of the Trail Link and find some fantastic bike trails all over the US. So as far as internet and phone, we might be a little heavy on these costs here because obviously, you know, just like you're listening to this uh, video right now, we have to upload and download all sorts of stuff to keep this channel alive. So uh, we have two unlimited smartphone plans that cost us $121 per month. We have one AT&T MiFi hotspot that costs us $25 a month. We have one AT&T Mobley hotspot that costs us $23 a month. And a Verizon hotspot that costs us $65 per month. So you add all this up, it's $234 per month. Now, I might add and put a little shout out for Technomadia. With uh, Chris and Cherie. Right. I think it cost me $59 to be a member of that per year. We pretty much have done everything that they suggested to do, uh, if it makes sense for us, internet-wise. And they have not led us astray yeah, at all. They're, they're a, a must-check out yeah. if you're not aware of we're, them. We're clueless on what to do, so we just pretty much are like a sheep and do what they say to do. And it's worked <laughs> out really well and uh, we recommend them. Yeah. Um, our tow vehicle costs. Now we, uh, as Sue mentioned, we tow a Honda Odyssey minivan. Uh, we tow that so we can use it basically as a garage for our bicycles. Our bicycles are real long. They're kind of specialized. They got all sorts of gadgets on them. Uh, you know, when you're driving around all year long with your bike on the back, all of the dirt and gravel and rain yeah, and you know we, you name it they would be they'd be totally trashed mm -hmm. so uh, whatever we drive is always going to have to be covered mm -hmm. um, we have no loan on the car we just have insurance fuel and maintenance and that comes to a hundred and ninety one dollars per month and that insurance is through national general now we used to have Progressive, they gave us a great rate the first year, but then like all insurance companies, they jack it up the next year. We had no claims, no nothing. Yeah, it was weird. Totally illogical. I rewarded them for their efforts by dropping them and getting <laughs> someone else. Uh, we drove 592 miles. Uh, per that, month. Yeah, that was driven. 
we've probably pulled it another four or five hundred miles that month. Mm -hmm. um, now we're into the RV costs, and this is where it really starts to get jacked up. Uh, in our chart we've uh, that you're welcome to get if you send your email address to uh, our journey and miles uh, dot com um, email address which I'll have down in the description I will send you these uh, this Excel chart and you can fill in the different things that you have we do not have a loan on it so that's a real saver for us Yeah, that helps our uh, diesel costs averaged two hundred and sixty three dollars per month we have an all electric coach so on our excel spreadsheet we have an empty space for propane but you'd be able to fill in your propane costs our rv insurance is 255 dollars per month now why is it so expensive well uh, we bought our coach used for two hundred and thirty thousand dollars it's about a four hundred thousand dollar list uh, rv so when you're at that end of the uh, uh, RV spectrum of what you're driving, of course, you're going to pay a lot more because if you would ever have an accident, the insurance company's got a lot of liability there. All well, what about being full time? That really affected us too. It, good point, Sue. I'm glad yeah. you mentioned that. Well, there are certain states that are certainly more user friendly to full time people, and there's only so many insurance companies that allow you to be full time. I don't want to have any issues if I ever have a problem and I have an accident or a fire or a disaster. So honesty is absolute must in how we're operating here. Our RV towing insurance averages us about $20 per month. We're members of FMCA Roadside Assistance and CoachNet. Now I want to caution people that only have FMCA roadside assistance it's just that it's roadside assistance if you're in an accident and you need your rig towed they will not pay for it don't believe me give them a call you'll be surprised yeah. that's why we have them both CoachNet is the real McCoy they're used to hauling around big giant monsters like this so it's no surprise to them when you give them a call and you might need a flatbed uh, our RV repairs and maintenance costs this year were actually on the low side. Mm -hmm. They were $584. Uh, Is that per month? That's, uh, that's per month, yes. Mm -hmm. And so if you wrap up the entire RV costs, it was $1,122 per month to keep that jalopy rolling. Mm -hmm. uh, next year we're anticipating it to be much more because we're going to end up buying uh, six tires and they're almost 800 bucks a pop and plus I'm more than likely going to get some something called retro bands which I highly recommend mm -hmm. people look at it's only sold exclusively by National Indoor RV uh, it's the absolute utmost in safety for your front tires in case of a blowout right now I actually have um, uh, Tyron tire bands inside uh, they were about seventeen hundred dollars to have installed we've uh, successfully had them in for two years I have no issues uh, with them but I'm gonna move on have them taken out carefully I'll sell those on Craigslist and I'm going to the next generation this retro band our monthly campsite expenses. Now, this is the climax of the whole video, I guess, <laughs> here. Uh, we it's all over the place. <laughs> yeah. We spent 1500 uh, excuse me, we spent $15,219 on rent, or if you want to call it campsite uh, right. fees, which comes out to about $1,268 per month, or $41.60 three cents per day so and actually if you want to compare that to renting a, an apartment or something this includes all your electric all your water all that so that is the expense right but uh, I guess the fallacy in that thinking is that when you rent an apartment for twelve hundred and sixty eight dollars you get the apartment 
Whereas here, our twelve hundred and sixty-eight dollars is we, just the space <laughs> to put our apartment. That we, bring we bring our along. apartment. Yeah. So it's it's really a, a tough analysis. Yeah. And quite honestly, that's why we're doing this. I mm -hmm. mean, it's a little bit strange and embarrassing to be putting your whole financial life out on the internet, but. I can't tell you how many times I've looked at different sites talking about how cheap and thrifty it is to do this lifestyle when in fact if you want to actually enjoy yourself when you're out there and stay at reasonably nice places and go and do things and travel uh, uh, you know and and move a certain amount I mean we only moved 5200 miles so that's not a lot so we're doing it pretty slow mm -hmm. and that's what keeps your costs down but yet this whole um, adventure that we're on is expensive. Mm -hmm. Now, I think at this point I want to put a shout out to a channel called Next Exit. Uh, Bob and Pearl have done an excellent yeah. job every yeah. single month documenting what they've been spending for the better part of well over a year. In fact, I contacted Bob and way back when, probably over a year ago, he sent me his spreadsheets. And that was kind of the basis on which we started. Now his are so detailed that I actually dumbed it down a little bit because it was just a lot of work for us. And we'll leave that work to Bob and Pearl because I believe as of uh, the taping of our episode here, Next Exit is still publishing their monthly Class mm -hmm. A motorhome uh, cost. Yeah. So check Ch them check out. Check them out. Um, so I took out uh, in the uh, chart, if you uh, order them uh, from us uh, for free, we'll just send you these x spreadsheets. I took out the month of May because the month of May was when we spent predominantly all of our time in one area, but also in a, a couple other expensive areas of California. California was by far, was even more expensive to RV in than the Florida area. Yeah, during, uh, during, high, season, during high season, Florida. Yeah, it was expensive. So if I take May out, our costs drop to $1,168 per month for campsite fees, which puts us at $38.70. Now, we mostly stay at KOAs, so we only get a 10% discount, and we get occasional free night because we accumulate so many points by staying uh, in KOA. But why do we stay in KOAs, honey? Oh, because we can book so easily. So it's like 11 at night, and we're like, man, we really need to book something down the road here. And we can go right online. They have an awesome online um, reservation system. But also, they're pretty consistent. If you're going to be at a KOA journey, yeah. you know that it's going to be usually one peop you know, one night stays, and then you're on your way. Or if you're at a holiday, you can expect a whole lot more going on as far as amenities. Right. So we can kind of anticipate what the place will be like and what they have to offer but it's mainly the the reservation system yeah. online it's yeah fantastic. you can be two o'clock in the morning and you can be having a panic all of a sudden that you have to go a different direction mm -hmm. and you can be assured that you can uh, have a place to store your 65 foot uh, uh, contraption that you're bringing along now other With people tow. that are more manly man than me they'll just end up in a Cabela's or a Walmart or somewhere and and they're perfectly fine with that mm -hmm. uh, maybe on our third year here I'll finally man up and try something like that but I'm not promising I it. was gonna say it's out <laughs> in public now yeah. so <laughs> I want to mention two other things uh, there's another vlog out there called uh, RV love uh, you know anybody that does any reasonable amount of vlogging uh, searching around on the internet would know that but they have an excellent uh, series and write-ups on the Thousand Trails membership uh, I think Bob and Pearl at Next Exit also say different things about it because they are members we're certainly going to investigate that to see if we could drop our costs but um, I'm 67 we've been at this two years we actually see no end in sight so Based on that, we really should look at that because that could really drop our cost. Yeah. The problem is, is when I look at where these places are, they're almost predominantly all stacked on top of each themselves over on the East Coast and over on the uh, West Coast. And there's just like this big dead zone in between. 
Um, you know, if any of you out there have really good experience with Thousand Trails, and you would want to give us some recommendation yeah, one way or the other. Love to hear it. We'd, we'd really love to hear that. We already know that you should buy a secondary membership through a membership. If I end up going the Thousand Trails way, I will buy the most super duper plan so that I have the best shot at being able to stay wherever I happen to be. Um, so what is it, the super duper opens up more campgrounds to you? Yeah, yes, and there's different zones and there's, okay. uh, it, it's a real complex system and it seems to be getting more and more complex every time they work on it. Okay. Uh, so then the last thing that I've included in the chart here, and uh, RV Love actually talked about this, that a big expense that everybody just kind of sweeps under the carpet, what really shouldn't be, is the cost of depreciation. Yeah. And I have a line on that in our uh, cost sheets. Um, and I think, um, I think maybe in my cost sheets that uh, I would give you, I would actually fill in. <clears throat> it would be, I've left a little spot in there where you can put in the price that you paid for your RV and then it's multiplied by 8% and it's put in as a cost for every single month. You can see that if you were to buy an RV for $400,000 and you have an 8% uh, depreciation cost every month or excuse me every year and you divide it by 12 it is a real uh, cost adder on your monthly cost certainly that money isn't coming out of your wallet every month but there's gonna come a time further down the road where you're finally gonna get hit for it mm -hmm. and you need to have that in your exit plan when you're finally done doing this and you either go to a tiny home or you go to a uh, uh, what park, are, park, a, a model. park model, or you go back to an apartment or yeah. stick and brick. But it's a cost yeah. that is lurking out there. And if you aren't thinking about it, then you're going to have a real surprise. Yeah, it, it's definitely, definitely not investing in a house where usually with a house, you sell it down the line. You're going to make some money. You're not with a, an RV usually. So I want to thank Sue for all of the You're work welcome, honey. Uh, all of the work that she put in this because I can't tell you how many times I would flip her a uh, a receipt on something that we've bought or we'd go into a campground and we're buying fuel or whatever yeah. and then I might think oh I bet you she forgot that and I'd quiz her on it and I'll be darned if I've every single it. time she had it we've yeah. been as accurate as we could on this I will tell you that when I finally assembled this a few days ago, it was an eye opener for even yeah. me. I knew this was going to be expensive. Uh, we're pretty much right at the end of our affordability on this. We are certainly not complaining. Uh, after coming up with these costs and seeing how expensive it is, we're still only going to change we're a still, few things. We're still going. So now with uh what you documented though that's you didn't put like our personal things like groceries and stuff like that well right? good question sue yeah be I, because everybody is so different we tend to buy organic which is going to be a lot more expensive we shop at costco which you save money when you buy in bulk but even like entertainment when we were in las vegas we had friends visit entertainment price went really up but when we were in Yellowstone National Park, I mean, we packed our lunch every day and had picnics. So our mm -hmm. entertainment and our restaurant um, expenses were way down. Right. So but, we didn't include um, any of that on this stuff, did we? But we do know mm -hmm. that the channel, our journey in miles, is all about value. So <laughs> all about I value. did actually include it in did the you? second chart that I'll give you. Ah. So the first chart is a stripped down one that you're welcome uh, to just fill in all your things and it'll kind of give you your rock bottom costs for the RVing type thing right. of it. But then I included this, uh, a lot of channels don't, but I thought, you know, uh. what if you don't particularly have a handle on what your groceries are? Use our handle until you get your handle. Uh, likewise, some of the other things oh, on so here. We shop different. Yeah, so you, I yeah. see that you've got like the, the medical expenses, the medical insurance, dental. Right. I'm doing this Invisalign thing right now, trying to fix my bite. That's an expense that right. not everybody's going to do. And I can tell you that if, if 
uh, you ask me how much we eat out and how often we're in restaurants, it's not much at all. I mean, when we're mm -hmm. going to Costco all the time and dropping 400 bucks every time there, obviously we're not eating at time. home. But yet, <laughs> when you're traveling and you're in awesome places and you have to make decisions, do I quick run home so I can save five bucks on a sandwich? Or are we going to sit down and some eat of, in here? Some of uh, eating out actually is the experience of the area. Right. Their, their local food, their local, like we just hit a, a little coffee shop here in Miles City, Mount Montana. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. Spoonful coffee shop. It is so cute and fantastic coffee. So right. you want to experience things and, and, too. And, and we literally might walk back to that same city because there was another place that was like a thrift antique store but they had a giant Woolworths uh, dining, dining uh, counter, counter, the original. So that was pretty yeah. cool so, too. So we might go there, we may or may not take our cameras, but we've got to experience that. Yeah. So you gotta pull your wallet out. So uh, restaurants, for instance, we spent an average of $308 per month. Per month. That's not a lot, you know, if anybody that eats at a restaurant oh, knows and, how much. Yeah, and has a uh, drink. Entertainment-wise, you know, we had a couple of months there where it, it got jacked up, but entertainment-wise, 384 months. We're not going to bore you with the details. That's all available for here mm -hmm. just to help you guys to uh, come up with uh, the sad but true final total. <laughs> And we, it's the price of admission. Yeah. That's what we always say. I mean, we want this lifestyle. We love this lifestyle. And we know it's going to cost us the way we travel and stuff. Yeah. But we work so hard all our lives saving and stuff. And it's like it's time to spend, spend that it. money and have yeah. some fun. And we're going to save See 10 bucks for our kids each. <laughs> each kid will each get kid. 10 bucks. So don't worry, guys. Yeah. You'll, you'll get your 10 bucks. Okay. Well, if you like this video and you appreciate the effort we put into it, Please uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, do whatever. Join but, join our small family of subscribers and let's right. get a little bit little bit bigger and no more people around the country. If you don't subscribe, we don't know anybody's watching. That's the only <laughs> way, way we know you're there. So we'll appreciate anything We're you can watching. give us. Yeah. Okay, we'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. That went well, huh? Did it? Good job. Right. Did a real good job, yeah. I hope it the camera. Actually flowed I hope the camera was on. I know, and I hope the microphone worked. Oh, geez, did we check it? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did.